Once again, taking your Bibles and turning to Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 15. The heart of the prudent getteth knowledge, and the ear of the wise seeketh knowledge. Chapter 19 and verse 2. Also, that the soul be without knowledge, it is not good. And he that hasteneth with his feet sinneth. The title of the Bible school lesson this morning is Prudence versus Rashness. Prudence versus Rashness. This is part one. These two texts of scriptures, which I just read, provide us with a stark contrast between an, an individual who is governed by wisdom and prudence with one that is rash and hasty in his actions. Prudence is commended, whereas rashness is condemned as being unprofitable and sinful. Prudence may be defined as the quality of being judicious or wisely cautious in practical matters. It is the ability to exercise judgment and caution before speaking or acting. In other words, it's not a good idea to insert foot and then engage brain. What we want to talk to you this morning is promoting prudence, promoting prudence. In order for prudence to be exercised and promoted in our everyday lives, we must see the value of acquiring the right kind of knowledge upon which to base our decisions as well as wisdom to make practical application of that which we have learned. So it's kind of what we talked about last week that be a doer and not just a hearer. So take what you've learned and put a practical application to it in our service to God. Since knowledge and wisdom come from God and are acquired by diligent search of his word, the quality of godly prudence cannot be promoted apart from the scripture mustn't have the scriptures be able to prove these things. Proverbs chapter 2, and as we go through this, kind of hold your place at Proverbs because we'll be coming back to it quite frequently. But Proverbs chapter 2, it says, My son, if thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandments, with thee, so that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom and apply thine heart to understanding. Yea, if thou criest after knowledge and liftest up thy voice for understanding, if thou seekest her as silver and searchest for her as for hind tre hid treasures, excuse me, hid treasures, then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord giveth wisdom out of his mouth, cometh knowledge and understanding. Chapter 8 and verse 8. Chapter 8 and verse 8. All the words of my mouth are in righteousness. There is nothing forward or perverse in them. They are all plain to him that understandeth the right to them that find knowledge. 
receive my instruction and not silver and knowledge rather than choice gold for wisdom is better than rubies and all the things that may be desired are not to be compared to it i wisdom dwell with prudence and find out knowledge of witty inventions then <clears throat> chapter 16 in verse 20 Proverbs 16 and verse 20. He that handleth a matter wisely shall find good, and whosoever trusteth in the Lord, happy is he. The wise in heart shall be called prudent, and the sweetness of the lips increase, increaseth learning. Understand, understanding is a wellspring of life unto him that hath it. But the instruction of fools is folly. The heart of the wise teacheth his mouth and addeth learning to his lips. And again, holding your place here, turn back to 2 Timothy chapter 2. Second Timothy chapter two and verse 15. Most of us all know this one study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So that's some very important instruction that we are to study. Uh, again, congregations get the idea that the pastor is the only one that needs to do that. And that's not the case. It's, even though Paul's talking to Timothy, who is a young preacher, it's scripture that's given to us that we need to know. We need to listen to God. We need to hear what he has to say, and it's through his word. Actually... <coughs> reading and i'll mention this later but reading a book that god uh, doesn't whisper god does not whisper god tells it plain he doesn't tell you in a dream he tell doesn't tell you in a a, a small little you know or a, a, some kind of a voice that you're going to hear and uh he just doesn't, I, I've had people come up to me and say, well, how has God spoken to you today? You know, and it's like, you want to reach out and shake them because, you know, it's just like, that's, it's not very prudent, let's put it that way. And uh, it's one of the areas that uh, is a big teaching today in evangel evangelism is that God is going to speak to you and he's going to verbally give you the insights of what's going to take place and what's going to happen. The only place we learn what God has to say to us is in his word, plain and simple. Sense knowledge and wisdom come from God and are acquired by diligent search of his word. The quality of godly prudence cannot be promoted apart from the scriptures. So in order to have prudence, in order to be able to define that what God wants us to know, we have to do it through his word. Proverbs chapter 2, or I'm sorry, Proverbs, not Proverbs chapter 2, Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 7. Proverbs 14 and verse 7. 
Go from the presence of a foolish man when thou perceivest not in him the lips of knowledge. The wisdom of the prudent is to understand his way, but the folly of fools is deceit. Then in verse 15. The simple believeth every word, but the prudent man looketh well to his going. Verse 18, the simple inherit folly, but the prudent are crowned with knowledge. So when we're looking at those that are foolish or in folly, that's what they're trying to impress upon you, that you need to listen to God, but not through his word. He's going to talk to you, okay? And he's going to send an angel. He's going to talk to you through an angel. He's going to talk to you through all other means. He's going to talk to you in a dream, and he's going to talk to you in, in this voice that you'll hear. And there's many other things that he's going to do. These have all been disproved by scripture. A prudent Christian will conduct his life by the following standard. Would the Lord Jesus, the Christ, be pleased with what I am about to do or say, not always, sadly to say, not always. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 10. We would hope that what's going to come out of our mouth every time would be pleasing unto the Lord, but that's not the case in many occasions. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 31. Give none offense, neither to the Jews, nor to the Gentiles, nor to the church of God. Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3. And verse 16. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. That is our admonition in being prudent toward God. If this principle were applied, much sin would be avoided. Now, the promotion of prudence requires the ability to receive reproof and learn from personal mistakes as well as the mistakes as others. So as we see mistakes by others, we learn. As we see mistakes that we've done, we learn if we're prudent. Now we can just pass it off and say, well, that was nothing. I don't have to, I don't have to uh, register that into my my brain of prudence that this is how I should act or this is what I should do. Proverbs, again, hopefully you're holding your finger there to go back to this. Proverbs chapter 13 and verse 16. Every prudent man declareth with knowledge, but a fool layeth upon his folly. Verse 18. Poverty and shame shall be to him that refuses instruction, but he that regardeth reproof shall be honored. 
Now, I'm sure that many times you have read the scriptures and it may talk to you and give you some idea that your behavior is not what it should be. That's what the scriptures are for. They're for instruction. They're for guidance. They're for learning. They're for to help us to be better Christians. Proverbs 15 and verse 5. See, the fool is the opposite. A fool despises his father's instruction, but he that regardeth reproof is prudent. So we need to lean toward instruction. And of course, the scripture tells us not to lean to our own understanding, because if we do, then it gets us in trouble. We can't lean to our own understanding. It doesn't matter how intelligent you are, how smart you are. It doesn't matter. As I told you last week about the man that could not read or write, but he was able to disprove by the scriptures um, what was right. We have plenty of examples in the scriptures about being prudent. And one of the primary reasons why we find inspired accounts of Noah's drunkenness, Lot's worldliness, Israel's unbelief, David's per, uh, promiscuity, and Solomon's multiplication of heathen wives, which led to adultery, to warn us not to fall into the same snares of sin. That's why they're there. That's why we have these examples. And when we examine these men, we can see that they had everything going for them. I mean, who would have thought Noah would have even considered doing what he did? You know, we won't go into details about what happened, but the outcome wasn't very good from him getting drunk. Lot, of course, he was worldly kind of from the start. He wanted to go down to the well-watered plains of Sodom and Gomorrah and make the big bucks. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll tell him about God too. But that failed. That didn't last very long. And then we know David. We know Israel's unbelief constantly, constantly. They're living that today. Even though they're still God's people, they're still living in disbelief unbelief one day they'll come to the knowledge saving knowledge of Jesus Christ then one of the ones that I I've read after so many times and just like I mean I can see where David was at he was basically twiddling his thumbs and had nothing to do he had idle hands and idle hands will call, get you in more sin than not it'll get you in trouble but Solomon, all that he had, he was the king of Israel. God gave him wisdom more than any other man, made him the richest of any other man. Elon Musk probably can't even come close to the riches that Solomon had. Because I believe he was the richest man that ever lived. And he was worn constantly. You know, you can almost see it coming. Because God had to keep reminding Solomon. I will bless you as long as you do not serve idol gods. So because he was had a little bit too much to drink, he's walking down through the palace and there one of his heathen wives or a couple of them grabbed him and says, come worship us, come burn incense to our God. And he did and that was it. You do not hear about Solomon ever after. But it was not without warning. God warned him constantly about this. If you go in and read it, you'll see that God warned him time after time after. I will bless you, but unless you do this. And you would think that he would have that imprinted in his brain, wouldn't you? But he didn't. He's just like us. 
We can read the scriptures from cover to cover, read the scriptures daily, and we look in the mirror and see what manner of man we are, and we walk away, and we just forget. Or we fail to remember, or we don't want to remember. Look at Romans chapter 15 and verse 4. 15 and verse 4. It says that for whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. So we have these examples. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 5. And six. First Corinthians chapter 10 and verse five and six. But with many of them, God was not well pleased for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now these things were our examples to the intent we should not lust after evil things, as they also lusted. Now we know what happened in the wilderness. They made a golden calf, wanted to take them back to Egypt. They wanted to be, they wanted to get on Pharaoh's good side so when he showed up, he wouldn't kill them. Except God did later on, destroyed all them that turned their back on him. Then go to verse 11. Now all these things happen unto them for an example, and they are written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. So we can see here that these things were given for our example. And God had it recorded that here's what these men did. These were... These were the patriarchs of the time. They were loved by God. They still were loved by God, even though they sinned. But their sin brought them into the place and they lost their fellowship with God. Just as it happened with Adam. Couple writers have explained, and I'm sure you may not know this person, but Herrick wrote, none pities him that's in the snare who warned before would not beware. They've been warned. We've been warned. The world is being warned. We see it almost every day with what God is doing. And I think many times God is saying, these things are not difficult for me. You think that they're hard. They're not. They're not difficult. All he has to do is speak a word, snap a finger, and look what happens. All of nature answers to God. All of nature answers to to God. He obey, they obey God. All he has to do is speak the word and, you know, California will fall into the Pacific Ocean. That's all he has to do. Are they deserving of it? Well, consider what's out there. Consider part of that, part of California. I remember the first time I ever met Brother per Purdue, he he got up to speak and he says, I bring you greetings from the land of fruit and nuts. He was from California. Prudence may also be promoted by exercising discernment, caution, and measure of foresight. Go back to Proverbs and look at chapter 22. Proverbs chapter 22 and verse 3. Proverbs 
Verse 3 says there, A prudent man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself, but the simple pass on and are punished. Don't we foresee the evil? As soon as the election was done for 2020, we seen the evil. We knew what happened. Now, anybody can try to pull the wool over anybody's eyes, but God has given us an insight in the leadership of the Holy Spirit to discern things that aren't correct. Things are evil. As we've seen the time progress, and now we're into the third year, we could have called everything right from the very first day what was going to happen and transpire in our society, in our life, in, our, in America. We knew it was going to happen. So we foreseen the evil. And we knew what was going to transpire. The age old axiom of look before you leap. See before you go must be applied. That's the way we should live our lives. Look before we go into that place. See it before we go into it. Understand what is going on there. Understand what is happening. I can't think of her name. Don't come to mind right now, but there's a, a song that comes up from time to time. I listen to Pandora a lot. It doesn't matter what station it's on. It's, it, 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 the same one comes up at Hallelujah. And the one person that sings it, it's KT or K something. And I got to looking at that and I thought, I'm going to look up, look her up. And sure enough, she's married to a woman. So they took the song Hallelujah, which is a very beautiful song, and destroyed it because of the persons that's singing it. And somebody said, well, that's prejudice. Said, no, it's not. That's that I'm not listening to anything. I'm not giving that person a pleasure. Me hearing them sing a song that's so, so beautiful when they're living in sin. Why do that? Then I seen on the news, we watch a little bit of Fox News, Fox 8 News out of Cleveland. It doesn't sound very long. Usually after the weather, it's off. And I can't think of her name. And I got to thinking. And I, I, one of the things that I really try not to do, and that's stereotype people. And I looked her up. She's married to a woman too. But they go on like, like she's one of the greatest singers of all time. She can sing rock and country and all this stuff. And promoted her. And didn't even bat an eye. So <clears throat> these are the things that we need to watch. We need to look before we leap and see before we go. Shakespeare said, when clouds are seen, wise men put on their cloaks. When clouds are seen, wise men put on their cloaks. And if you don't, then you're a fool. You're dismissed. <laughs>